inflow infiltration in the immediate area was not the cause. So that's what made us spread out. We have to go backward and do the smoke test and find out where's all this coming from. So that's where we're at and I think we've got a good handle on that, but the engineer needs to kind of take all of that data and put it into a work program that we can supply to DEQ for corrective action. So, I think, he, Go ahead. I think he already answered it. There wasn't a, a very large percentage of inflow coming from residential sewers, or that hasn't been proven yet. Um, well, uh, I guess the question is define large. It, it's certainly not the majority of what we can perceive from the smoke test. I don't think that it, the majority of the inflow is coming from residential. I think the majority is coming from the manholes, but uh, I, I can't go so far as to say we don't have a problem with residential. Uh, I think we did find some that were having issues, uh, but uh, that what what is happening, I'll put it this way, what is happening at the residential level of inflow infiltration could not be enough to cause the bypasses that the, is the real issue in the, in the person in the complainant's yard. I know that was a concern of Mike's, you know, before we started that, a lot of that was coming from residential. Mm -hmm. Thank you. As I recall, <coughs> it seems that y'all have done a great job, especially with the limited resources, uh, to keep us on top and, and out of being fine. We're not subject to fine yet, are we? No. And so I move that we uh, go forward with this consideration. Second. Roll call, please, Jay. Dee Dee Patterson? Yes. Chris Anson? Yes. Bill Wallen? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Tim Hoffman? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Jeff Griffin? Yes. Motion passes. We entertain a motion for adjournment. Second. All right. All right. With that, we'll move on to the Seminole City Council meeting. We'll call James. Chris Anson here. Dee Patterson here. Stephanie Lambert here. Larry Church here. Tim Poplin here. Bill Waltman here. Corey Crabtree here. John Kramer, Jeff Griffin here. We have a quorum. Please stand for the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's not going to miss the Mishka Hungry Yodai, Moksapka Kukwiche de Mado, Moment for Talofa Seminole, Moment for Estre Mogan, Eden Okajikis, Moment Chimi Saka Missi Yanagiska. God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayer of thanks for the city of Seminole and for all our people. Let us love one another, for you are love. Amen. 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 Consideration and action of consent agenda. Move it to approval. Second. Roll call, please. Chris Hansen? Yes. Dee Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Hoffman? Yes. Bill Walton? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Motion passes. We have elections and appointments. Consideration and possible action to approve the following mayoral board appointments. Ken Green to the Planning Commission through June of 2022. Motion approved. Second. Roll call, please. Chris Anson? Yes. Dee Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Hoffman? Yes. Bill Walton? <clears throat> yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Motion passes. Michelle Downey to the Planning Commission through June 2022. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Chris Anson? Yes. Dee Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Walton? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Motion passes. Mayor, Ken Green to the. Yeah. You, we don't need a roll call on them, but we do need them separate. Okay. So we can All right. do it. Ken Green to the Board of Adjustments through June of 2022. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Steve Shopes to the Board of Adjustments through June 2022. Those under approved? Second.
those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Shevlin Fouts to the Urban Renewal Authority through July 2022. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Michelle Sneed to the Urban Renewal Authority through July 2022. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Micah Baker to the Lake Board through June 2022. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? And uh, did I say 2020? You said 2022. 2020. We need to make that We're change. Still okay. Uh, Lanny Reiner to Lonnie. the park board. Lanny Reiner to the park board. Um, and there's no time frame on that. No date. We need a date on it. Yeah. Okay. It's a three-year term, I believe. Brian So be a three-year term. Okay. Or a three-year term. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Do we have any appearances or petitions from the audience for the uh, Seminole City Council? Yes, ma'am. Hi, uh, my name is Stephanie Davis. I'm new to the area. Thanks for letting me come and be a part of this community. Um, I wanted to see, there have been a lot of talks about the Seminole swimming pool and what the options are going to be for that. And I know we're going to cover that a little bit here today. Um, but I wanted to see if the council might be opening, open to appointing um, a citizen committee that might be able to assist with you guys. I've got lots of ideas um, as far as fundraising goes, naming rights, and some other options that we might be able to explore prior to raising taxes. Um, and so I just wanted to see if you guys would be open to that. And if so, um, obviously I'm happy to volunteer to lead that. I've in fact got about five or six other uh, citizens that are on board already to help me with the committee. So just wanted to plant that seed um, because we, we definitely want to help you guys and try to minimize the tax hikes that you have to make on everyday citizens. I would just ask that maybe get with Sharon and give her your phone number. So Who's right Sharon? here, Sharon's right here. So oh, okay. that way we would have your contact information. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that the mayor appoints such a committee. I think we have one. Do we have one? All right. The more the merrier. Then that we can uh, accept the membership of this lady and the people that she has recruited and um, go forward from there. So we'll need to put that on the next. Okay. Actually, I think that if the, I think the mayor can appoint an advisory committee anyway okay. at the mayor's discretion, mm -hmm. but anybody that wants to be a part of that can just. Well, just you can give me a list. Of Okay, I'd love to do that. Thank you for your time. Anyone else? Okay, we'll move on to approvals and acceptances. Bids, item one, consideration and possible action to approve declaring a 1987 Ford LTD, bid number 3552 as surplus. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Jay. Chris Hansen? Yes. <clears throat> Dee Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Hoffman? Yes. Bill Wantland? Yes. Corey Kraft? Yes. Motion passes. Item two, consideration and possible action to approve the sole bid of $19,348 from All American Carpet and Tile for new flooring at the community room as budgeted in the fiscal year 2018-19 capital improvement projects. Move to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Chris Hansen? Yes. Eddie Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Walkland? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Motion passes. All right, resolutions. Consideration and possible action to approve resolution number 2019-06, a resolution declaring May as Community Action Month for the City of Seminole. Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Walton? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Motion passes. Ordinances, item four. Consideration and possible action to approve ordinance number 1229 and ordinance rezoning 545 West Strother from R2 to family residential to C1 commercial. I have a question for Steve. Hmm? Has that been brought through the 
Planning Commission or the Board of Adjustments? Planning Commission, yes. Okay. I move to approve. I know they've done their homework on it. Second. Roll call, please. Chris Hansen? Yes. Edie Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Hoffman? Yes. Bill Wamblin? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Motion passes. Under current business, item five, consideration and possible action to approve a transfer of funds in the amount of $100,000 from the series 2015 AB revenue bonds to the Seminole Urban Renewal Authority as budgeted in the fiscal year 2018-19 capital improvements project. Move its approval. Second. Roll call, please. Chris Anson? Yes. Edie Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Walkman? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Motion passes. Item six, consideration and possible action to approve the work order not to exceed $33,820 to be paid based on percent complete of services proposed from wall engineering for the design and bidding of the two proposed roundabouts on Bourne Boulevard and East Broadway. This is an unbudgeted item to be funded from revenue series bond proceeds. So what will they be, what will they do? Is this the, where you were talking about we need to have someone to do the soil testing and that sort of stuff? Yes, this okay. is the actual construction design of the roundabouts. Does that include everything on the roundabout? No, sir. This is the, just the traffic barrier type event. This does not include any uh, public art that might be placed on top of it, nothing like that. This okay. is just getting the structure built. Just curious, because I have a strong interest in local artists putting together some designs for our consideration. Um, we have an excellent opportunity. I know she's my ex-wife, so it's difficult for me to be criticized for saying good things about her because, <laughs> because of that. But she is a superb artist and she teaches at Seminole State and we have a fine lady who is our, uh, who is teaching art at the high school and I think that if we got those folks working together we could draw in some, uh, a, a good project, a good community project. Otherwise, Jay, um, let the minutes reflect. He's advocating for his ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> She's a wonderful person and a fantastic artist. <laughs> and she specializes in large sculpture. Oh, so. cool. We could just steal some of those horse sculptures from Sean. <laughs> she might put sculpture you up there, Larry. Well, I'm not bad. <laughs> I'd hate to see that. They'd turn around, they wouldn't go through. <laughs> we have a motion to approve. Second. Yes. Roll call, please, Jay. Chris Hansen? Yes. Edie Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Walton? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Motion passes. <laughs> Item 7 Consideration and possible action to approve renewing the annual public works contract with Silver Star Construction which includes a 2.4% consumer price index adjustment over the prior year. Move its approval. Second. Roll call, please. Chris Hansen? Yes. Edie Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Walton? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Motion passes. Item eight, Consider action, consideration and possible action to approve the purchase 2009 BMW motorcycle at a cost of $4,100 for use by the Seminole Police Department to be funded from proceeds of the Police Impound Special Projects Fund. Can someone tell me why we need a motorcycle? Having a motorcycle would give us the, the use of like school zones right now, Northwood School, Wilson School, we can't even get in those areas during the pickups. Uh, if, we, if we set it like uh, Mel Phillips and Wrangler to, 
which everybody complains about people blowing the stoplights there. When we sit there, they see the police cars. They, we, don't, we don't catch the people doing it. You put a motorcycle there, we catch them. Uh, school buses, when they run the stop signs at school buses, it, it gives us a little bit of, of resources for that, for a little more traffic control in those situations. Uh, it's a, another vehicle that, that just gives us a lot more traffic control in those situations. Thank you. I like to say that I've seen a lot of improvement in our police force since Chief Hanson has taken charge. And I had an opportunity to see them in action, and they did a very professional and safe job. I hate motorcycles. <laughs> motorcycles are there's 34 percent more accidents on a motorcycle than there is in the motor in other motor vehicles. Um, my personal opinion is bleeding through <coughs> on this. I think that, uh, in all respects, sir, I think that people who ride motorcycles are great people, just like the rest of us. But for some reason, they have suspended a part of their concern for their families and relatives and friends. Because of that high rate of accident, who, I've just worked in the ER too much. Uh, and brain surgeons and neurosurgeons, uh, one was giving a speech one time or a talk, and he said, how many of you are gonna buy a motorcycle for one of your kids for Christmas? And the hands went up, and he said, I wanna thank you in advance for the income that I'm about to receive <laughs> just because of the high incidence of accidents. And I think we're asking for that. I'd like to um, look for an alternative to the motorcycle because I love our chief and our police officers and I am concerned about their safety. I can assure you he will be, whoever rides it will be wearing a helmet. <laughs> oh, that's not the helmet. <laughs> That's the, and I'm sure that they'll be a safe driver, and I'm sure that they'll be very careful. But a motorcycle can hide, and a rider can hide completely behind the post in your car, and you don't see them. One of the things that happens to motorcycles is someone opens a car, a car door and hits them, pulls out from a parking space because they haven't seen them. Most motorcycle accidents aren't the fault of the rider. Most motorcycle accidents are a result of that's gravel where it shouldn't be, unexpected, uh, uh, my other motor vehicles running into them, knocking it over. I don't know if I have enough right to, she's raising her hand, is, is that something? I'm going to remove acceptance. Do we have qualified people to? drive the motorcycle? I believe we do, sir. We have people that, that are motorcycle riders right on a regular basis. Um, you know, there's many agencies that use motorcycles because they're proven to work. It's a proven law enforcement entity that does work. Uh, there will be training involved through, through the course of time for whoever's uh, allowed to use these motorcycles. There will be training involved. Um, it's just something that I, that I believe does work, and I believe it's a resource that will work for us. Second. Roll call, please. Jim. Chris Anson? Yes. Dee Dee Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? I reserve the right to say I told you so. <laughs> I don't know. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Wantland? Yes. Corey Crabtree. Yes. Motion passes. Item 9, consideration and possible action regarding an agreement with Seminole State College to provide public swimming access to the indoor pool at Seminole State College. So, uh, <clears throat> we, I, I think we've got a verbal uh, understanding with the college on providing swimming space for our public. Uh, pending your approval under this item, we would pay the college $10,000 for the time of 
June, and then after the next fiscal year begins, we will pay them another $10,000 from July 1st to August 1st. Uh, the hours will be one to six daily. Uh, I think that's I think that's five days a week or six days a week. I, I don't recall, but it, it's six days a week. We'll call it six days a week, and uh, from the time of 10 a.m. to noon, we will have uh, the ability for lessons, swimming lessons. So the, the caveat on this is that they do have what they call upward bound, uh, and that is, I think every, I think it's three, two or three weeks out of the summer, and those people need to have access at the same time our public is swimming uh, from 3.30 to 5 during the time, that, the weeks that they are here. I did not see that as an issue. Uh, they have agreed to allow us to have concessions. <clears throat> the gate and the concessions will be with us. So uh, our plan has always been to utilize the concessions as part of the, uh, of the compensation for the pool manager. And so we sh we're in good shape there. I think the hours are almost exactly what we did have before. So it's really the $20,000 in lease expense, which frankly is about what we were spending in water and chemical uh, before we closed our pool. Uh, so our exposure on this would be the 20,000 lease fee and also for the wages during that period to hire the lifeguards. So I'm thinking probably in the neighborhood of $21,000 for the expenditure on the salaries, the wages. All total, we're going to be looking at $41,000 to provide swimming to the public during the summer. And I'll be glad to answer any questions. Of course, if you agree to this, we will go to Atlanta and we'll paper it up. But I didn't want to go much further until I had you guys' blessing to get into the, the actual papering. Did I hear you say that this is about the same amount that we were paying to, man, to run the pool before? Yes. And that pool has been shut down for one, two seasons? Two seasons, uh huh. So we've saved $82,000. <laughs> uh, well, so there's 82000 that we haven't spent for the pool. I'm just you're, trying to break Your it. math just, is like my wife shopping at yeah. Dillard's. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm trying to put a pretty bow on this because yeah. I'd like for us to have a, All right. a swimming we, opportunity for our children. Are we charging to get in? Is that going to offset some of the cost? Uh, that's entirely up to you guys. Yes, uh, my plan would be to charge to get in. Now, you, you all will set the gate fee uh, with the understanding that we're not going to charge upward bound. Their students are paying separately to the college. So, uh, but anybody else would pay a gate fee. How about those folks who are, whose parents are on disability, or I guess we could go to the school and find out what children that attend school are low income, whatever that's called. Um, five bucks to Someone who's living on seven hundred forty dollars a month is a lot of money. Have we done that? I don't think we've done that in the past. No, you haven't. I'm proposing that we do that. That we give consideration to uh, folks who can, kids who can, whose parents can demonstrate that they're say below the poverty line or wherever we want to draw a line for them. Because I'd rather see those kids, in effect, being babysat at the pool than roaming on the streets and getting into mischief. We don't want babysitters. I mean, we had to, we had to implement rules, and I would suggest that we implement the same rules that we had for our pool to prevent that. We don't. I mean, you get into a deal where you've got young kids coming to that pool, and our our our, our lifeguards are not babysitters. They're there to save lives, and when you get too many little kids that they're acting. 
looks like a cap on the number of children that no. I mean, the number of occupants. No, they have to have someone there who's supervising them. Huh? Well, that's uh, 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 below a certain age. We, we cannot take that responsibility. Well, that's good. I'm all for that. I mean, it's uh, I, I, I just use the wrong term. We, we, yeah, we, we ran into that problem where we had little kids there with no supervision, no parents, no way to get a hold of anybody. They drop them off. They have no food, no water, uh, which you know, it just becomes a situation that the city should, shouldn't be undergoing. I mean, it should be taking that responsibility. I agree with that. I, just, I think it, what that does is it points out a, another need in our community. And, and that's something that, that we could address a different way. But a swimming pool is not a safe situation to address that need. Well, I agree with you. I well, think that liability forces our insurance. In how are we involved? That way? Well, Corey can probably answer this. We probably have a little bit better uh, situation than that. We've got the, the junior college, and then we have our our uh, insurance carrier. I'm just going to have to take a look at it. I haven't looked at that at that. all. I mean, instead of having a public pool, you just move the pool to a different location. I mean, it would almost be the same as if you had a public pool. The only problem is, I'm sure the college in the agreement will probably, you will sign the whole harmless agreements because it's not, it's not their problem that we have, I mean, we rented the space, but if they, I if imagine they fall or something different. because of something, they did on our time, that would do on our dollar. And they may have their own set of rules that we may have to right. follow along with ours. Um, but uh, one thing, I mean, if, if this is going to be for the summer, I mean, we sign it for both months, period, or is it something if we find we're not getting the use because it's indoors, you know, we have a handful of people every day and we want to do that second $10,000 in July? Welcome on, please. I mean, you know, I'm all for it. I want some people. Yeah, in, so but I want to make sure that, that we just. Yeah, that was that was not discussed. Uh, I will say that it's next fiscal year that you're obligating ten thousand dollars for. So uh, I don't think technically. Yeah, I think we're we're going to be okay on that. Uh, now, whether or not that's something I would want to do to them is a different animal because I I would expect or suspect probably is a better term, that they'll, they'll do some uh, maintenance that they may have postponed, thinking that we're coming, uh, they'll may buy a new diving board or new ladders or things that they were anticipating that income coming through. I don't know that I really want to hang them with that. I get that, I'm fine, I'm fine with that. I think if they put in their agreement that at any given point if they decide this isn't the right fit for them, that they want out, Maybe that would be the point at which we could ask for one out for us as well. Yeah, we did so have give and take. We did have like some family rates for yearly passes. I would recommend that we that we uh, make the agreement with the same rate structure and the same rules that we have with our own that we have with our own pool. I like to see us adjust the family rates for the families that are low income. I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. Mike, do you recall? Uh, we went out there and looked at it for uh, several hours, and I uh, I don't know the answer to that, but it's a bunch. I mean, we, I don't think there'll ever be a case where we need to worry about it being too full. What was the capacity of the Grizzly? Do you remember what that was? 45. 45, right. I mean, at least we know it's more than that. But. It was probably, uh, the college is was it about maybe two thirds the size of what ours was? Yes. It wasn't quite as big. Right? How many could we have? At the old school? Yeah. 550? Yeah, 550. Probably. Yeah. I, I think I've distracted us from the, what we're addressing or bringing up the, the rates. When will that be set? How, how does that work? How do you determine what to charge if we don't, if we don't determine it today? Right. Uh, well, what I would have done in this case is just continue to do what we had in place. So 
Uh, however, you always have the ability to, to adjust the rates. You're the, you're the ultimate bosses, so. Is that an issue that should come back before the council? Or is that an I, issue we should settle today? Yeah, so, yeah, so we're, we're hoping to have this available June the 1st. And the big caveat in this is if we can find lifeguards. Uh, we're way late in the game. Uh, Lana, bless her heart, has agreed to put on a training, uh, a Red Cross sponsored lifeguard training prior to us opening the pool. And that's a big deal. It is a big deal. So hopefully we can get a few of the young people, uh, the lifeguards en enrolled in that if they're not already certified or need to be recertified, we can get them in under this. So uh, I don't know that I answered your question, but the, we're gonna kick this off June 1 if we can find the lifeguards and I don't anticipate us having a, well, we're, gonna, we're not gonna have to have another special council meeting until June. We need to know now. Okay. Then I move <laughs> that we uh, go forward with this with the same rate structure and et cetera, et cetera, that we had before with con a consideration to reduce the rates for children and families that have low income. Do you have a rate in mind? No, I have no idea what you charge. Five bucks is what I thought. Of. Who's going to determine that, Joe? Well, I, I mean, you can look at, there's lots of ways to find out who these folks are. Right, but I don't, well, I don't want to be the one responsible for finding out if they provided me true information or not. Well, I think that probably the school system has a record of folks that, children who come in and receive special meals or whatever, and, they, and the parents had to produce some sort of uh, proof. Chair, would you, would you tell them that, that what you just said, the, the, the cost that we had prior on the other pool? Um, adults 12 and up are $5 a day. Children under 12 are three dollars a day, and a family pass is 75 dollars. Good. I know that don't sound much like much. I mean, I probably have that much in my pocket, but people who live on 745 dollars a month, the cheapest I've been able to find, and I'd, I'm sensitive to this because I have managed money for those folks, for some of them that can't manage their own money. You take $745 and the cheapest rent that I can find with bills paid because remember these folks don't manage their money well so they can't put up deposits, et cetera, et cetera. So I have to rent something for them that's bills paid. Uh, just a small room like a motel room is $550 and that's at a discount because I begged for the discount. That leaves them when you total all that out, they've got less than $100 a week to live on. So, five bucks is a lot. Um, you know, because that's just their housing. You think about because they have to pay, spend on food, that we do a great job, we've got a good food pantry, a marvelous job for the underprivileged in our community. But any way you cut it, you know, a bar of soap costs what? A, um, Sack of groceries cost what? Right. You know. I'll amend my motion to uh, to keep the rate fees and cut the family the season passes in half, and then keep all the other stuff the same. It's a good start. I like that. Thank you. I was just going to say that's probably a good idea because create we'd have to create criteria. Area, and somebody's going to have to approve it and verify it, and that would be an administrative nightmare. So setting a rate is the best way, in my mind, to do that. Make it easy on the staff. And we have a pool committee that can look at this for next year. I'll second Chris's motion. Please. I'll third. Right, roll call, please, Jim. <laughs> Chris Hansen? Yes. Eddie Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Kevin Poplin? Yes. Bill Wamblin? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Motion passes. Item 10, consideration and possible action regarding potential renovation of the Herb Gunter Municipal Pool. 
What can you possibly renovate? <laughs> well, do it up and replace it. Yeah. Just yes, fill it in. <laughs> Put in a plastic liner. I'm going in unbiased. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the it, it's it's been said, and I'm sure you've received phone calls about the fact that why don't we just patch it a little bit and and move on? It's a, it'll be much less expensive to the taxpayers. Well, the firm that we hired to do the site location and the uh, the pr preliminary uh, footprint of a new pool versus the old pool, uh, they came to the conclusion that it would be just as expensive. However, they did not provide any backup documentation. So uh, it's been suggested, and I think it's, it's a good idea, uh, that before we go to the taxpayers, we really need to have answers on exactly how much is this going to cost to repair. Uh, I think we learned a lot in the in the high school elections that old structures cost a lot to repair, but we really don't know. You know, I can sit here and tell you with a degree of confidence that there's a void under the uh, under the pool because we've seen the sand, we've seen the evidence, but I can't tell you if that void is uh, an inch and a half or if it's 80 feet. So one of the things that I think is necessary in order to be able to take this to the voters and, and them have confidence in what we're telling them is some background information. So uh, we're going to ask you to set aside some funds. This will be non-budgeted money, probably coming out of a, uh, what we call the non-bonded accounts, to actually do bores through the concrete shoot camera work, uh, uh, put a camera into different lines, into the voids that we think are, are there. Uh, there'll be radar invested in that. And so uh, what we're talking about, you probably have seen some of the oil field technology where they can uh, do radars ground and, and ground, thank you, that's exactly what it's called. Uh, ground penetrating radar and also some sound testing. So we've got firms available to us. Uh, I just want permission from you all to proceed before you see bills come across the table. I didn't want you to think, now wait a minute, why are we wasting money on something that we've already decided we're not going to repair? This is simply a, a precursor and who knows? We may come back after we get evidence and say, look, for $180,000, we can repair the pipes, and for $216,000, we can fill in the void under the pool and uh, coat the pool for another two hundred. So, a million dollars, we can have a functioning pool. We don't know, and that, I think that's the questions that we have to answer for the voters prior to going and asking them for a new structure. So, Steve was very kind. I was the one that requested that because. Um, I feel that, yeah. <laughs> you did a good job, so, um, in the fact that sometimes we don't provide all the information that maybe our citizens should have. They should know if it's going to cost $500,000, a million dollars, two million dollars, because they're probably going to be voting on it. And if we don't give them that information, you know, can they, if all they have is something new presented, they don't really know the whole story. So. I'm not sure what this might cost. That uh, that's still yet to be determined on what uh, to have them come out and do an evaluation. But you know, this is part of what I believe where we can do better uh, in transparency is having some numbers. And the second company may come back and say it's not worth spending any money on, and that will be two firms. That I will say three that more after going so, that high school. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, so mean, there's no sense in dividing the town over a swimming pool all over again. Right. So what I would request, this likely, uh, every answer we get is likely going to uh, need two or three other questions answered. So uh, it'll, it'll definitely raise questions. This thing will spider. Um, I suspect at this point, we're gonna need around $20,000 to answer the things that I know need to be answered. 
but I would ask that you approve not to exceed $45,000 uh, just so that I don't have to break stride and these companies continue to do their work if we need more answers. So uh, that would be my ask in this as you appropriate uh, not to exceed $45,000 to get uh, answers on the cost of renovating the Herb Gunner Municipal Pool. So that's going to come out of this year's budget? It'll be non-budget, yes, non-budgeted, yes. Can we have that shape? Absolutely. It's in the green or something? It's in the green. Good job, Mr. Mayor. Let, well, we let haven't voted on it yet. So I don't know, but it's wrapping it up. Let me make a motion preceded by this. Uh, when I was Bishop of Eau Claire, we had a conference center that had a swimming pool that ran into roughly the same problem we've got here. And the question was, is this something we can repair or must we replace it? And we had to find out the answer because it made a whole lot of difference cost-wise. The answer was what we needed to do was fill in the old pool and level it. Mm -hmm. But we had to run the test and everything. So I move that we authorize up to $45,000 to do this study. Second that. Roll call, please, Jim. <coughs> Chris Anson? Yes. Dickie Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Hoffman? Yes. Bill Walton? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Motion passes. Item 11, consideration and possible action regarding the future options of a public pool aquatic center. So the good Lord has intervened and, and we've got a technical glitch. Uh, so apparently we're going to do this study prior to really showing the public what we're talking about in terms of future uh, new pools uh, you guys the city council was delivered packets that were completed uh, last year and this was all presented at a previous city council meeting uh, there were several pool plans uh, that included nice water slides again we had a great PowerPoint but th this isn't going to work today so uh, but it, it, it did include uh, really nice slides uh, great swimming area some of the plans included lap uh, pool areas uh, and also shallow water and, and some uh, events uh, okay uh, we Sharon's says that we'll provide that on the website if anyone's interested uh, go on there the the price is stamped right on it several of them are uh, things that have been done recently but i can give you a range and it just depends on how many slides how deep your pool is how many square feet the pool will be uh, the price range would be somewhere between 1.7 and 5.7 million dollars so there are at least four different variations that kind of increase in price from 1.7. Uh, 1.7 is, is pretty basic, uh, but it definitely gets us in the swimming business. Um, I will also tell you that we've got uh, some rough numbers. I, I don't have this on the PowerPoint, but we can also uh, provide this to the council at a later time. Uh, for the property tax increase that would be looked at for various uh, areas and I've got that uh, broken down into what it would mean for a $50,000 uh, home a $100,000 home per year so it, it's pretty good information and uh, you know some of it is expensive some of it is somewhat affordable uh, well, we'll bring this back to you in June, and hopefully by then we'll have some preliminary information on our, on our refurbishment of the Herb Gunner pool, and then we'll, we'll have a, a better, we'll, we'll definitely be running the PowerPoint by then, and we'll start making some decisions, you guys will, in terms of are we ready to go to the vote? This design is kind of what we would like to see for our citizens. And uh, in the meantime, 
I think it'll be a good idea if we go ahead and have one more pool meeting uh, with the advisory committee. And uh, we'll, we'll let you know when that is going to be. Thank you for volunteering, Mrs. Davis. Uh, so we'll, uh, there'll be some heavy lifting between now and then, but you guys will have all the information in front of you. And we look forward to having a swimming pool, hopefully soon. Uh, I won't say next swimming year, but definitely that would be one of the targets that we would try to hit at least some swimming next summer. Just I'll have to learn how to swim. Yes, we do need to know how to swim. Do we need to table this? Yes. Motion to table. Second. Second. Roll Jane. Roll call. Chris Anson? Yes. Cindy Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Hoffman? Yes. Bill Wantland? Yes. Corey Craft? Yes. Motion to table pass. Item 12. Consideration and possible action to approve the commercial service order an agreement with Suddenlink to provide telephone and internet services to city facilities, including City Hall, emergency services, and public works. So, uh, not all of the ideas that we come up with work the way that we hope that they will. Uh, you will recall that we left AT&T several years ago. Their bills were just outrageous and they were getting even more so. And uh, we decided to go out with uh, Nobel, uh, who was a provider, and, and then we piggybacked their service on the RS, RSI here locally. And, uh, well, we're, we're not pleased. There have been times where our 911 service was down completely. There are a lot of occasions, multiple times, that we will have all the phones at the fire department and police department and city hall will be down. Uh, we just, we've come to the realization it's not going to be reliable enough for what we think the public deserves. Uh, our alternative plan is to go to Suddenlink. Suddenlink will not provide all the savings that we had anticipated through Nobel but it would be right in between. I would say halfway in between. I think we were at thinking $80, $81,000 savings from AT&T to the Nobel plan. And I think we're probably gonna be about halfway between that with the sudden link. So uh, it'll be a $42,000 increase over the, the Nobel plan, but it's still, $42,000 less than what we were paying for AT&T. And it's a much more reliable service, we're promised. Uh, they have a lot of technical support that we think is going to be a huge help for us. There's a lot of fiber they, that we have access to that's gonna make it a lot better, I'm positive. It's a good thing we saved that $82,000 on the bill. <laughs> for two years, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris, we uh, looked at the contract and had to put the rider on it, and we sent that over there, and they agreed to the to the rider for our budget year. So we've got a an out twelve months. Okay. We don't budget this again. Okay. Roll call, please, Jim. Chris Anson. Yes. Judy Patterson. Yes. Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Hoplin? Yes. Bill Wantland? Yes. Corey Crafter? Yes. Motion passes. Item 13, consideration and possible action to approve waiving the $5 garage sale permit fee during the annual citywide garage sale scheduled for June 7th and 8th, 2019. Move to approve. Second. Roll call. Chris Anson? Yes. Kitty Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Hoffman? Yes. Bill Wantland? Yes. Corey Crabtree? My garage says yes. <laughs> <laughs> Item 14, consideration and possible action to approve the Chamber of Commerce's annual request, request to host an independence festival in Municipal Park on July 3rd. Move to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Chris Anson? Yes. Dickie Patterson? Yes. Stephanie Lambert? Yes. 
Secretary Church. Yes. Tim Hoplin. Yes. Bill Wantland. Yes. Troy Crabtree. Yes. Motion passes. Yes. I think we should clarify. They still have to get a permit. We just don't charge them for the permits on that garage sale, right? Okay. That was a yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Item 15. Consideration and possible action to approve the Family Resource Center's annual request to use the community room for their summer camp during the month of June at the reduced rate of $400. No, just approve. Wait, wait a minute. I don't think that's correct for the written. I think it was for a reduction in the $400 on what you normally pay. Is that correct? That is correct. But because you approved remodeling of that room, our time frame is June 3rd through the end of last day of June. So if we're not going to be able to use that because of repairs, then we need to consider that also. And part of that price at one point included the pool. I think that $400 is probably not including that. So that's also something that we need to consider. I withdraw my motion. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when are the repairs to be completed? We've got to get the estimates from the flooring company. Um, I don't know how we're going to do Does that. Does it have to be done before your event, the floor? It was just approved today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we are, you, are no. you anticipating <laughs> that it might be done before July 1st? Yes, I told them it had to be done before July 1st. Right. They said that's fine. But I just don't have a date yet. Okay. And your event is when? July. June 3rd through okay. June 27th. June, the month of June, four days of the week. So that really may mean that that would need to be done in next year's budget then, instead of this year, so we have to delay it. Do you have an alternative location? We have made as many contacts as possible to try to find a location large enough to fit 35 to 40 kids. It's usually what we host. Um, in an area where the, the reason the community center works so well for us is because we have Boomtown, we have Splash Pad, um, so many different things that we can do right there. There is not a location in Seminole that we can we, we cannot transport. So therefore, we need that centralized location um, without making them walk from <coughs> the center. Center, Citizen Center or somewhere. Carl, I could get the armory for you if you need it. Would that work? That will work. I got it. I'll take care of that as a backup if we can't do it. Probably we'll have, for we'll have a day at the theater, a day at the wellness center. I mean, there's alternatives. We could use the bridge, but to get the whole month, we weren't able to do that. I think one or two of our days, we were on hold waiting for Seminole State Pool. This is why we didn't get those calls back. <laughs> Um, We've got a meeting tonight at six o'clock. If you can, if you could come to the armory, okay. somebody, and we, we can take I'm care of you. Okay. At the armory. At the armory. Carry on. Oh, my, my problem is solved. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Well, so the question is, we, we don't, don't need to this. this. Yeah, that would be no action if we're going to wait on that. <clears throat> <laughs> Move on. I like that. All right, reports. Well, first I want to say uh, thank you to those that serve on all of the committees that we have to help the city run and operate. We need all of those volunteers. We need good volunteers. We need volunteers that are willing to show up when meetings are called. And I want to thank everyone for that. I also want to thank others that are willing to serve on, on special committees or, meet, or uh, that we have. Uh, you know, that just helps the city operate a lot smoother and it, it provides, I think, for a community to come together to fill a need, to solve problems. It just makes it better for everyone. And so thank you for everyone that, that is doing that. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of rain. If we could vote to stop the rain for a while, I would love someone to make that motion. But 
I know mowing is a problem right now for a lot of people, so hopefully uh, we'll slide uh, a little bit on uh, any fines or tickets we might write for, until we kind of dry up a little bit. I haven't had any complaints, but you know, just kind of throwing that out because it's very difficult right now to, to mow. Um, that's really all I have, so uh, city manager. I uh, just want to say congratulations to our Seminole State uh, softball team heading to nationals in Utah and uh, to the boys also, the young men that uh, did well in their regional. They didn't make the trip to nationals, but uh, our girls did. Uh, that was a cool event. If you didn't get to make it out there, that uh, there were hundreds and hundreds of people out at our softball fields uh, there across from Seminole State campus. Uh, neat deal, tons of local volunteers running the gate, the concession, tickets, uh, all of that, selling t-shirts. It was neat to see our community rally around our college and support them the way we do. Uh, just a reminder, we're going to have the council is going to be breaking up into small groups and uh, doing the hard lifting, the heavy lifting of uh, working out a budget. This is Jay's most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> and, yeah, so if you haven't scheduled your time with the small groups, uh, please get with LaDonna. I think she's, she's parceling that out to make sure everybody has a chance to uh, chime in on the budget. And then we'll be looking at the capital improvements uh, here very soon as well. Uh, you're accustomed to seeing the, the whole ask list and we'll be going through that again uh, I, I don't I never actually ran the total but I'm sure the ask is about 40 million dollars and we don't have 40 million dollars to spend so uh, you guys will be trimming that down into something workable that our citizens will be served best from um, I will tell you that we're seeing progress on the air ambulance service. Uh, we've got several that are interested in, in the call volume. I want to point out that uh, Bryant Baker and our hospital ER staff have done great, great work in helping us recruit uh, a good service for our people. And uh, we're really encouraged by what we're seeing. And I, I would not be surprised if we uh, don't have an uh, an aircraft, a helicopter in Seminole in the, in the next several months. So, um, And congratulations to all the moms and dads that got graduates going off tonight. Uh, you got them there, finally. All right? So I know what that means. Congratulations. That's all I've got, Mayor. City Attorney. Please don't promote anything, but the American Legion is having their first annual golf tournament. July 6th, and every bit of the proceeds go right back into the community. So they don't keep anything. It, it's for scholarships, Boys State, uh, you name it. So if anybody wants to, to help those guys out, field the team, and or come out and help, that would be a, I'm sure they won't turn the, the help down. Dee Dee, <laughs> can you play still? Contact Gary Adams. Contact Gary Adams or myself. We'll hook you up. Remarks and inquiries of council members. Ward 4, Chris Hansen. Um, I don't think anybody's coming out at this special time. I kind of thought when we moved it, it'd be a little while. We've got about the same amount of Thanks, guys. Dee Patterson. I'd like to thank our staff, our staff city. They're great. You never hear a negative complaint. I have not heard anything in the last several years, and that's great. They do a great job. Also, uh, have we looked into the west fence of the cemetery? Where are we at on that, and how much more would it cost us to put a lot of our fence in like we have in the front of the right. south side? So that is on the list for the council to discuss. That's on, there are a multitude of things that are on that board that we're going to talk about, Dee Dee, in the budget sessions. Well, I'd like to see the option of having the rod iron fence on that side. I think that would beautify that area tremendously. 
Okay. We'll see what we can do about getting an estimate, and the adjustment will be made on the on the ask board. War three, Corey Kepner. Um, just real quick, I'll second what Larry said about the, the chief and his staff. I had a situation without going into much detail that happened in my own front yard. That uh, <laughs> kind of a weird sequence of events. And one just happened to drive by, and he was just noticed something that was that looked odd, and turned around and came back. And actually, there were some drugs that were taken from that. And I'm actually, I'm, I'm applauding you because he actually turned around and took care of the situation, didn't just drive on and thinking, that's nah, just something that maybe someone should stay in there. He actually took the initiative to turn around and investigate it. And, uh, you know, I didn't like happening in my neighborhood, but I did like the fact that they did take care of it. So I appreciate it. Tim Poppins. I have no reason. Word two, Stephanie. Huh? All right. Word one, Bill Okay, we're done. Oh, I guess uh, Larry. That's my stomach rumbling. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think some of the time that um, me going on about um, women and girls, and women, single women with children, and the inequity of women in the workforce, some of that is, I think, misunderstood. Um, so I just want to say the fact about women in the workforce. They comprise 47% of our present workforce. They make 80% of what men make at the same, doing the same work. And often these women are raising a family without a man's support. Um, I just want for people to keep that in mind and also keep in mind that the rate of equalization is such that it'll be about 200 years at the present rate. As someone told me this morning, said, well, it's, it's improving. Yes, it is improving, but it's going to be 200 years at the present rate before women will receive equal pay. And I'd like to commend our police force and all the people that are involved here. Everyone does a fantastic job. My experiences on this council has been a wonderful experience for me to see how dedicated and how thorough this city is. Thank you. All right, with that, we're going to entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. All in favor?
can drive it to your neighborhood. Right? So, all the Yeah. 